Hi, Dave here, G3 LLC. As we know in amateur radio, comparison quite often can be a thief of joy. That's particularly true when you're trying to choose an antenna. So in this video, I've come up with something I want to share with you. I'm just going to put out there, it needs fettling, it's just a straw donkey. Because what it is, it's something, as a result of comments on these videos, so thank you very much, saying, Dave, could you help us with a formula that would help us make a decision about choosing the right antenna. And what I thought about is the right antenna in the context in which we operate. So in this video, I'm going to cover two types of choices. This is my own biases now. I do POTA. So what's the optimum POTA antenna for you to choose? We can use a formula for that. And I'll give you some examples. And also, at the moment, I'm thinking about a new base station antenna based on a relatively small garden. So, and also with those important things that are totally out of our control in amateur radio, number one being propagation. The other thing is that's totally out of our control is the attitude of our neighbours and more importantly, the attitude of our spouse, as we know, can be quite a blockage because they think they, we should spend our time and money on things that are far more meaningful to them, quite rightly. Who am I to argue? With that in mind, this formula will help you to say it's not a finished article, it's a start, but have a look. I have used artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence to be correct. And look at this news article. There are currently 1 million mathematicians employed according to this article and in the context of this article by this one company, 1 million PhDs testing the mathematics of AI to make sure it's robust. And what I've done is I used not three, but four different AI applications to make sure that these calculations are as robust as they can be. But remember, all these things are based on the inputs and the inputs are the things that you think should be in there. So feedback at the end of this in the comments would be great. It's going to be a long video, but what it should show you is exactly how we can have an unbiased approach to buying antennas and get something that's right for us and also within our budget. How about that? Can't be bad, can it? What I'm going to show you first of all is a short video clip of me testing an Alex loop, which you'll be aware of, and you will have seen reviews on these before. But this is not me doing a review. Hold on. Not at all. I promise. This is just me using an Alex loop and showing when you've got a bit of enthusiasm, how you could probably skew somebody's buying choices. And we tend to know when we look at videos on amateur radio, it's either something somebody's flogging, it's either something the mate's flogging, or it's something they've had sent to them and they've not asked for it back. And you obviously get the other ones where people have paid for them and give a rigorous and thorough review. So what comes next is a bit of an example how you can get over-enthusiastic about something, and then I'm going to put it all into context with the maths. How about that? You're going to say, yeah, well, it's all very impressive, and it's very well thought out, and it's certainly working. But 500 quid, the best part of, you've got to be, well, what's the phrase they use around here? Christ on a bike. The Alex loop and 10 watts, because we're using external battery. There's the 10 watts. Oh no, how wrong was I? We've done all that on 38% power. So that's crazy, right? Oh, that's amazing. So I was using not 10 watts, but 38% of that, so 3.8 watts, we've made those contacts. That's mad, I was just about to change bands. So let's put out some CQs again. Do you see what I mean? So what I'm gonna do now is go into the mathematics of this. As they say, comparison is the thief of joy. And if we can get rid of anecdotal comparison and bring it down to a formula that informs our choices in a far better way, and then we can be very happy with those choices and not do the and 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 in life, keep buying other antennas based on some not robust recommendation. This has got to be a win-win. These are the constituent parts of the algorithm. Band performance score, power handling factor, extras, peripherals, the and and ands we must build in for the antenna to work effectively. Tuning and usability factors, ground or loop efficiency factor, QRM, where that's an issue, for example, at home rather than POTA, and total system cost. For the POTA version of the AVI, Antenna Value Index, 
we were implicitly assuming portable field deployment, obviously, noise often lower than home, but sometimes unpredictable, space constrained but not suburban QRM dominated, your setup time can sometimes be a big thing. Power typically QRP to low power with the option for higher power and structure is the same but the weighting and reality changes for when you use an antenna at home. Practical notes. BPS dominates because it directly measures RF efficiency. Other factors act as multipliers so a very high performance antenna can still score low if it's expensive, fiddly, low power or noisy. The multiplicative structure is intentional. A zero in any factor drastically reduces the AVI. This reflects real world deal breakers in antenna selection. Cost divides the numerator, so a low cost antennas get proportionally higher AVI, assuming comparable performance. And this gives us this formula, which then means those are all the abbreviations. So you can have a look at those and stop the video if you like. That then takes us through to the next part, which is, why is this a good model? It penalizes antennas that are theoretically good, but operationally annoying, we all know them. Explains why people stop using certain antennas despite good reports and separates engineering performance from human tolerance. What happens when you apply the antenna value index? Well, I use DX Commander an AliExpress positive V dipole, the full Monty Slidewinder vertical from M1 ECC, an Enfeind half wave, and an Alex loop. And this is what the formula does. Surprising, maybe. The formula for the home-based antenna is exactly the same, but different weightings. So what happens when we apply that AVI to the old favorites of home-based antennas and some of the things that I was considering? So inverted V dipole, delta loop, delta RX from Yuri, the RF guru, an M-fed half wave, an inverted L, the Facebook guru's favorite, and the Chiro Matsoni baby loop. Well, just look at the results. Very interesting indeed. And you might be thinking, so you're putting up an inverted V dipole, Dave. Well, that's for another video, but it's, it, it's interesting. You can interesting when you take all these factors into account. And you, what you can do is using the AI is go back in and say, well, I think you've got this wrong. Let's refactor this. And it gives you a different value. And you can fetly and come out what's right for you. What does this tell us? Well, I know what you're going to be saying. Oh, look, Dave, at home, surely you'd have a 120 foot mast and a multiband Yagi on top of it and all that sort of stuff. Of course, and you can run those formulas yourself using exactly the same antenna value index. Just put the inputs in and it will run for you. And you can test it out and you can make those decisions and you can put different things. Because what it also does as well, it isn't clear from the previous bits of the video, it dives into the modelling of antennas and uses that data. So when you run it through AI, I use ChatGPT, I use the Google version, I use DeepSeek and I use Grok, paid versions. And what it does, dives in there, uses the modelling stuff that's available from the modelling software and applies that to that antenna for those bands it's available on. So it's using loads of inputs. So it's really interesting. I don't know what you think. And it's helped me massively, not just with POTA, but more importantly for the spending decisions here. For example, a Chiro Matsoni, yes, it's pronounced Chiro, a Chiro Matsoni baby loop looks incredible. But, you know, it's, let's say, a thousand and a half pounds and there's and and ands with it to get up, rotator, all that sort of stuff. And before you know it, you're spending £2,000 for something that doesn't look that great. Well, it looks great artistically, but I'm talking mathematically. But something else, as long as you can tolerate a wire up in the garden or something similar. It's Delta Loop from uh, RF Guru. Those top three are pretty tight and look fantastic. And what does it say about the, the Facebook advice of always use an inverted L, which I've seen in the past? It's a really good thing that takes out biases. That's my view. But look, so this is just a starting point. Over to you. What do you think? Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And I appreciate your time watching this. 73s.